Greetings family, Genevieve here. Thank you, as always, to all our subscribers, and we welcome our new subscribers to the channel. Please help the channel with your likes and comments, you can share them with your loved ones. Let's bless others. We do not have much time, brothers and sisters. We hope you will be blessed with this Bible study. Satan hates the truth. We are strong when we obey the Lord and resist all enemy attacks. Today Brother Joseph has a good teaching as always. Let's listen to what God has for us today. Stay tuned. More blessings are on the way. Well, folks, I want you to understand something here that I'm, I'm very saddened, very, um, very troubled about the condition of the hearts of God's people concerning the truth. The value that is placed upon the truth is just, it's just breathtaking to see how truth today is being uh, devalued. It's, it's amazing. The value that is placed on the truth today is astounding. Um, and I know that in part, this is this is an attack. Um, this is the work of Satan, trying to belittle and devalue the truth, and cause ministers to water it down. The truth. Now, <clears throat> the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the truth is going to make us free, shouldn't we value it? Shouldn't the value upon the truth be the highest value if it's going to make us free? There is a Tremendous battle going on in this hour. Um, we read in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was a war. And there was war in heaven. That's not just a small little scrimmage. That's not just a battle. That's a full-out war. And this is not a war of the shedding of blood. This is not that kind of a war. This is not a war where there's uh, casualties in the physical realm. This is a spiritual 
war against the truth. This is a war of words. This is a war of divine truth. That's why the scripture makes it very clear that the truth is precious, precious promises, costly, and even priceless. Now, I recently... Um, received an email of an individual that reached out to us. We shared a few things with them. Divine truth. And this individual said that their family came under attack. Listen, folks. Satan does not want you to have the truth. He doesn't care if you have a mixture. He doesn't care if you have confusion. He just doesn't want you to have the truth. He does not want you to understand divine truth. He doesn't want you to understand the overcoming life. He doesn't want you to understand that you, by applying the truth to your life, can make yourself free. You can be made free by applying divine truth to your life. You shall know the truth. That word know in the original Greek is genosko. It's intimacy. Intimately knowing the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now I hear thousands upon thousands upon thousands of churches and ministries telling the people, misquoting that scripture, the truth shall set you free. Well, it's a process. It's not instantaneous. The truth does not set you free. It makes you free. It's a process. I want to talk to you about this war. I want to talk to you about the opposition of truth. Satan hates and opposes the truth. I'm going to say that again. Satan hates and opposes the truth. He has set himself against divine truth. He has set himself against the will of God. He is not opposing and he has not set himself against those that are doing all these wonderful things in the Lord's name, casting out devils in his name. He's opposing those that are in the will of God, doing the will of God, by the will of God. There is a difference. Not everybody today is doing the will of God. Not everybody today has truth in their hearts, in their spirit. And not everybody today is free. Many today are so bound by uh, the fear of man that they're afraid to obey the Lord. They're afraid and they're quenching the Holy Spirit. They're quenching the Holy Spirit. Now you heard recently that David Wilkerson and his wife both fatally taken out of this world in a car accident. But what you may not know is previous to that, 
right after 9-11, the Lord wanted, Billy, uh, he wanted David Wilkerson in love, in love, to rebuke those in his church that were putting their trust in the stock market. And in his message, he began to say it. He began to tell them, and he stopped. He didn't finish. He quenched the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You don't quench the Holy Spirit and get away with it. We're not our own. We're, we've been bought with a price. And if the Holy Spirit wants to do something and we're hindering or we're in some way uh, opposing the Holy Spirit, then we're pretty much useless to the Lord on this earth. I watched with my own eyes and listened with my own ears as he clammed up and would not continue with what the Holy Spirit wanted him to say. He stopped right in the middle. Now you say, well, Brother Joseph, I didn't see that. I didn't hear that. We cannot quench the Holy Spirit. It's the truth that makes people free. Yeah, it might have been a difficult thing for David Wilkerson to say, and he might have lost some folks in his congregation. Because you don't speak against the stock market. You don't speak against putting your trust in the stock market. He would have offended some folks, and he knew that. And he was concerned more about numbers and more concerned about those in his church that were providing uh, the money to keep his doors open, then he was concerned about what God wanted him to do. And then let me say to you out there and forewarn you, if you're concerned about numbers and counting noses and you're concerned about the bottom line, then more than you're concerned about obeying the Lord and doing the will of God, you're in trouble, friend. You see in the scripture what happened when David numbered the people. God was not pleased with David. And the scripture says, cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. And I would say there are very few in this hour that are doing the will of God. And I love the scripture. It says David served his generation by the will of God and he fell asleep. He served his generation by the will of God. May that be our testimony. I did not do my own will, but I did God's will. Remember the struggle. Do you remember the, the battle? Remember what Jesus faced in the garden. Not my will, but thine be done. Let this cup pass from me. An all-out battle, war, came against Jesus in that garden. A spiritual battle to the degree that his sweat was at great drops of blood falling to the ground because of the pressure, because of the battle that he was in. Satan did not want Jesus to get to that cross. He did not want him to get to Calvary. He was trying to crush him at Calvary, he, or at the uh, Gethsemane. He did not want him to get beyond that point. And let me tell you, Satan does not want you and I to get to the place where we actually do the will of God for our lives. Because you cannot do the will of God doing your own will. Your will and God's will are not the same. You must deny your will. Your will must be replaced with his will. Amen? So understand, those that are doing the will of God in this hour are going to be opposed. You say, what does this have to do with truth? 
The will of God is truth. God is truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Amen? And Pilate asked Jesus the question, what is truth? And Jesus never opened his mouth. And he went out to the people and he said, I don't find any fault in this man. So we see that truth is without fault. And God is able to present us faultless before the throne of his glory. And Satan does not want that. He's opposing. And let me just help you understand this. He will definitely try to accuse you falsely, trying to taint your testimony. He'll try to do everything he can. If he can't find something on you, if he can't dig something up on you, then he'll make something up. That is how far pride will go. It is so bent on destruction and so bent on defaming the character of those that are righteous that it will make up lies. And you and I, brothers and sisters, have got to be ready to stand against the wiles of the devil. We must be strong in the power of the Lord's might and be rooted and grounded in Christ in this hour. We cannot be moved by the opinions and by the false accusations. We must stand our ground. Now, let me un help you to understand this. That is character. When nobody is standing with you, when everybody's opposing you and all that is your concern is, Lord, are you pleased with my life? It doesn't matter if people are pleased with your life. Lord, are you pleased with my life? And that's the testimony that Jesus Christ himself had when a voice, when such a voice came from a cloud, from heaven. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Don't be concerned what people think about you. You should be much more concerned. What does the Lord think about me? Am I pleasing the Lord? Is my life, is my testimony, the way I treat people, and my character, my testimony, Amen? And we see in this scripture in Revelation chapter 12, there are some in this hour that are going to overcome in this war. And how did they overcome? By the word of their testimony. Not by what people told about them. Not, not the opinions of men. Not even their own opinions. But they came to the place to agree with the will of God. You must renew your mind with the truth. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind. You must renew your thinking, brothers and sisters. You must renew your, and I say it this way, you must renew your stinking thinking. Renew it with the truth, with the word of God. We must stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is no pushover. There's a reason why he's called Satan. He is a destroyer. And he's the opposer. Now, we're not fighting with flesh and blood. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. And this war is not flesh and blood. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. 
Amen? But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How are we going to overcome Satan? How are we going to overcome his attack? There's only one way to overcome Satan, and that's through the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we can't love our lives, even unto the death. If we're afraid to die, we will shrink back from the commission. We will shrink back from what God has commanded of us. We will not follow in uh, the order and we will not obey his command if we're afraid to die. In the days of old, when David would go out on the battlefield and the soldiers would go out on the battlefield, they did not go out on the battlefield thinking, I'm coming back. They were going out there knowing that it's possible I'll never return, never see my children, never see my wife ever again. Do we have that mentality today? Jesus said, you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. No, this is no time to be shrinking back. This is no time to be uh, falling back. This is the time to go forward in the power of his might. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. Very soon, uh, Muslims all over this world, but in the United States, are going to begin stirring up trouble. Trouble is coming, people. You listen to what I'm telling you. Trouble is on the horizon. Terrible things are coming. And are we going to shrink back? Are we going to be afraid of Muslims? That defy the armies of our God? No. We are going to stand and be strong in the power of the Lord's might. And we're going to obey the Lord. Amen? It's God before us, who can be against us? We should be more concerned with displeasing the Lord than we're concerned of our heads being cut off. We should be more concerned if we're in a grocery store and people are being threatened of their lives, we should be right there to protect them. We should be ready to take the bullet. We should be ready at any moment to fall upon a woman or a child and protect them. Are you listen to what I'm telling you. This is no time to be afraid. This is the time to stand, to be strong in the power of the Lord's might. We've got to get beyond the mentality of thinking like men. And we've got to start thinking the way even as we see in the scripture that Jesus thought. We must not be afraid to die. I love what Paul said. To die is gain. Think about that. Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. Amen? There is no fear in love. Perfect love. God's love perfected in our lives will cause us to not be afraid. And the scripture says, fear him who can destroy your body and soul in hell. Are you listening? Don't be afraid of what man can do unto you. Don't be afraid of what your government can do to you. Don't be afraid of what man can do unto you. Listen to what I'm telling you. Who are we to fear? Well, we don't just fear feel it, fear itself like the world thinks. No, these cliches are not going to keep you from uh, 
to keep you safe. We fear God. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The beginning of wisdom is to fear God. That's the beginning. That's just the beginning. If we're going to stand for God in this hour, we're going to have to be wise. We're not going to be foolish and just listen to what we should do, but we're going to be wise and we're going to be doers of the word, not just hearers only. This is the time to make yourself ready. Now is the time to prepare. Because listen, folks, it's coming. It is coming. Total darkness is coming over the land. Gross darkness over the people. There is a storm brewing. I just recently heard uh, Jim, uh, Billy Graham's son saying Islam is a storm that is coming. And even, even though his dad is Billy Graham and many hold him as a great man of God, a great prophet or a great minister, they, they don't listen to his own, to his son. When he says Islam is a storm. It is a storm. And if you go into the book of Zechariah. You will see that where the scripture talks about. A curse that goes out over all the earth. That word curse in the original Hebrew. Is the word Allah. Is it any wonder. That Islam is taking over the world. It's right in the book. It's right there. But we're not afraid. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Are we going to be afraid of people whose God is not even God? Whose God is not even a God? It's time to be courageous. It's time to be uh, strong, courageous, fearless. It's time for the warriors of Christ to stand up in the power of his might. It's time for us to stop seeing our God as a puny little God and understand that God is greater than the power of the enemy. He's greater than the darkness. He's greater than anything the devil can do. It's time for us to praise and worship God who is the creator of heaven and earth. Amen. I believe, folks, it's time for the earth to ring again even as it did in the days of old. It's time for God's people to be used by God. It's time for us to stand up. Stop saying we're Christians. Stop saying we love Jesus and show it. Amen. Let's be Christians. Not just say we're Christians like Catholics do. Let's be the Christians. Let's be Christ-like. Let's be followers of Jesus. Amen. Let's follow Jesus Christ in his bloody footsteps. Let's take up our cross. Let's deny ourselves. Let's follow him. Let's follow our commander. Let's follow our general. Let's follow our God, our captain, the captain of the Lord of hosts. Not everyone is going to march with him in this hour. He's inspecting us right now in this hour. He's inspecting the soldiers that are going to walk with him, that are going to march with him through the land. He's not going to take just anyone. Even as he chose 300 out of all those people at Gideon, he only took 300. All the fearful, he told them, go home. Amen? And then he put another test to them. The ones that lapped like a dog. I can't use you. You don't know enough to put the water in your hand and see what you're drinking. God's not going to use those in this hour that don't have any value for truth. That water's a type of truth. The Lord is looking for those in this hour that will inspect. You understand what I'm saying to you? You want to make sure what you're taking in is truth. 
You want to make sure it's clean. You want to make sure it's pure. You want to make sure it's holy. You want to make sure it's from God. You want to make sure it's from the Holy Ghost. And not something man has given you. Because God's not going to use just anybody in this hour. And I do believe that the Lord is going to show forth his mercy before he shows forth, before judgment. I believe that. And God has some vessels of mercy that he is preparing even now that are going to uh, see what Jesus said, the greater works. Jesus said, greater work shall you do because I go unto the Father. No, listen, while the world's getting caught up in violence, getting caught up in war and getting caught up in all the anger and the bitterness. No, we are like Jesus. We go about doing good, healing all that are sick and oppressed of the devil. We don't get caught up in what the world's doing, what the devil's doing. We just go about doing good. Amen. We go out doing good like Jesus. Amen. Don't be distracted. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to get distracted. No, we go out with joy, led forth with peace, with the enemy under our feet. Because good will overcome evil every time. Amen? Yeah, he, the false accuser, yeah, he's going to accuse you. He's the accuser of the brethren. Yeah, he's going to try to make up stories about you, but you've got to hold to the truth. You got to let the truth make you free from the opinions of man, from the fear of man. Are you listening? Is anybody out there listening to what Brother Joseph's telling you? If you stand for truth, if you live the truth, if you're walking in the truth, you're going to be opposed. It's time for the warriors to stand up. Amen. It's time to arise and shine. Those today that are playing church, those today that don't have the goods, those today that call themselves a Christian and they're not, you're in trouble. You're in serious trouble. The Lord does not take lightly to hypocrites. And you don't have the power to stand. You will not have the power to stand in the day of battle just calling yourself a Christian. You better have and possess what it takes to stand. You better have the full armor of God. You better have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You better have the shield of faith. You better be ready, brothers and sisters. You better know how to appropriate the truth. How to apply it, how to wear it, and how to wear it well. Amen? Praise God, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This war that's getting ready to take place in the heavenlies, it's not going to be physical. It's not going to be carnal. It's going to be a spiritual war, and it requires spiritual weapons. Amen? The dragon, the devil, he's not going to be overcome by hypocrites. He's not going to be overcome by those that call themselves Christians. He's not going to be overcome by those that say one thing and live another. He's going to be overcome by overcomers. And that's what it says. Paul said, in the evil day, Having overcome all, stand forth. Stand and stand therefore. You can't stand in this hour if you're not overcoming. Very few today are being taught a life of overcoming. Most today are being, I just left a church last weekend that's teaching the people, you can't stop sinning. You're going to sin. You can't be perfect. And that's what the people are being fed. But that's not the truth. 
What does the scripture say? Let us go on unto perfection. Amen? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect? How perfect is that? Don't believe the lies out there that's trying to tell you just do your best. Your best will split hell wide open. You don't need your best. You need his best. And his best is the truth. And the truth will make you free. The truth is him, Christ. He on the son of man, the truth shall make free, shall be free indeed. He makes us free. Amen? Hallelujah. He's still making folks free today. If we'll submit. There were things that Jesus told them to do. And if they didn't obey and do what Jesus said to do, they wouldn't have gotten results. They had to do what Jesus said to do. Mary recognized that. Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Well, why should we do what he says to do? He's just a prophet. He's just a man. That's Joseph's son. Why should we listen to him? No. He is God in the flesh. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Amen. And the voice that came from heaven said, this is my son, my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Do what he tells you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. There were some things that Jesus Christ told his disciples to do. If the people did not sit down on the grass, they never would have gotten fed that day. The, the bread and the fish would have never been served to them if they didn't first sit down on that grass. Jesus said to his disciples, make them sit down. I don't want to sit down. Well, then don't eat. Amen? Hallelujah. Not easy to get a, a multitude of people to sit down. But I guarantee the bread and the fish didn't come until they sat down. And the Lord's not going to force us to the ground. At least not yet. Today we can sit down willingly. Today we can willingly humble ourselves. There's coming a day when you'll be forced to the ground. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, hallelujah, to the glory of God the Father. There's the day is coming when the very presence and glory of God will crush his enemies. Hallelujah. But today is the day of grace. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Now we can willingly bow. Now we can willingly sit down and be fed from the master. The day is coming when multitudes of people are going to be crushed under the power of God. They're going to be crushed to powder. Are you listening? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh yeah, it's coming. That day will happen. I just think about all those out there right now that are so filled with Satan, so filled with the devil. They'll mock and they laugh and they chide. That day is coming. Not just when the Lord's enemies are put under our feet, but when my enemies are under my feet. Do you consider the Lord's enemies your enemies at this point, at this juncture? Do you see the world as enemies today? Or are you looking at the world like they're your friend? Because according to the scripture, the world is an enmity with God. 
We're not making friends with the world. Jesus did not make friends with the world. And if you really understand the scripture, they, the world, should be entreating us. Because we come for war. We're not coming for peace. And it's not war against people. It's against the devil. It's against Satan to free the people. But we're for war. We're not for peace. Now, Islam is for war, and they're not for peace. But the weapons of their warfare are our kernel. They are natural. And all they can do is cut heads off. All they can do is try to fear monger. Are you listening? We've got the power. We don't need weapons of the physical realm. Amen? We've got the power of God. We've got the glory of God. We've got the power of God in our in our lives. We, at least we should. If you can get someone to willingly surrender without having to force them to surrender, that's much better. That's much better. Right now in the United States of America, they're trying to get the people to surrender to a new world order so they don't have to force them. But if last, if it comes down to it, they will eventually force the people through martial law. But right now, they've been working very, very, very tediously trying to get the people to willingly surrender their rights, willingly surrender their liberty. And most are starting to already. I just heard on the news the other day where this woman was excited because martial law was on the streets. She has no idea what she's saying. Martial law is not good. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's not liberty anywhere else. There was a day, a time, where the Holy Spirit, where the spirit of truth was in this country, in the United States. And we experienced and we enjoyed and we appreciated liberty in this country. But you know what's happening in America right now? The Holy Spirit is withdrawing himself from this nation. Even as he left Israel, he hovered over the temple. Then he hovered over the mountain. He was leaving. He was moving out. And that's what the Holy Ghost is doing right now. He's leaving America. He's leaving the United States. And he's going to other countries. And if you're not ready to follow, you will be left Right here where destruction is coming. It's time to leave. It's time to walk with God. It's time to follow the cloud. It's time to follow the Holy Ghost. Because I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is not staying in America. He's leaving. He's grieved with this nation. And I will tell you this, thus saith the Lord, the Holy Ghost is leaving the United States of America. We are in a very critical time. When God leaves a nation, there is no longer protection. There is no longer going to be safety. Though they tell you peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon the United States of America. And it's coming suddenly. I've seen it with my own eyes. I have seen it. Folks, listen to what I'm telling you. I've seen it. I've seen the nuclear attack upon the United States, and it's not going to be pretty. Millions, millions of people gone in a flash. I saw it. It's coming. The Holy Ghost is grieved. You must be ready. Just as Jesus came to the disciples and he said, follow me. Right now, in this hour, God is speaking through his ministers. Follow me. 
follow me. And if the Lord is saying, follow me, and he wants you to go to Africa, you better go. If the Lord's telling you to follow him, and he's going to India, you better go. No matter where the Lord's going, you better go where he tells you to go. It's a serious hour, people. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. You must do the will of God. That's the only place safe, and that's the only place where there is salvation. Gone are the days of playing church. Gone are the days of being a hypocrite. Gone are the days of having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Now we come to the time where you're going to find out where the real are. We are the real, true, righteous are. Oh, yeah. You will know very soon who the real ones are, who the real righteous are. Because the day is going to declare it. The day of the Lord is going to declare it, who are his and who are not his. This is not a game, people. This is serious. Jesus did not go to Calvary so you and I can be hypocrites, so we can play church. He went to Calvary to save souls from hell. That's why he went. That's why he died. That's why he shed his blood. To save souls from hell. That's the truth. To save souls from hell. Now stop sugarcoating it. Stop saying that Jesus loves you and he understands. He came into this world, went to Calvary to save your soul from hell. That's straight. That's as straight as you're ever going to get it. You ought to thank the Lord for his grace. You ought to thank the Lord for this minister. You ought to thank God that he has given me boldness to tell you the truth. Because we are under attack. Satan hates and is opposing the truth. He's opposing those that live the truth. Those that walk in the truth. Those that obey the truth. If you're being opposed in this hour, you want to thank God. If the devil is fighting you in this hour, you want to thank God. Thank God. Because he can only make you stronger. Amen? Amen? The scrimmages, the battles that we've been going through to the, to, to the climax of the war. All the things we're going through is preparing us for the all-out war. And most of God's people will never make it to the war. They'll be right here, left behind on this earth to be raptured after the war. Three and a half years into the great tribulation of the seven years Daniel spoke of. The church, most of the church, will not engage in this war that we read about in heaven. Most of the church will sleep right through that war. Even as Jesus prayed more earnestly, the disciples slept. God has some warriors that are going to press on, and they're going to press through, and they're going to pray through. Are you listening, folks? That's where you prepare for war. That's where you get ready in your closet, in that place of intercession, in that place of prayer. And then when you get on your knees to pray, not if, but when you pray, remember when you get on your knees to pray, when you get down to pray, remember all of hell is going to try to oppose you. You don't get down there. To play games. You get down there to do business. Amen. You get on your knees. To fight. That's where you fight. You fight on your knees. If more ministers would fight on their knees. When they stood in the pulpit. They wouldn't have to fight. To speak the truth to the people. They'd have a boldness. They'd be able to stand and tell the people the truth and not be afraid of what the people are going to think, not be afraid of losing people out of their congregation. 
but they don't fight on their knees anymore. That's the problem. Ministers are not fighting on their knees anymore. The altar's been replaced today with all kinds of things. It's time for the altar to be restored. Amen? I read in the scripture where they had to restore the altar after it was broken down. Amen? Don't you agree that the altar needs to be restored in our individual lives? That we need to get back to the place of, of prayer? We need to get back to the place where we uh, supplicate before a holy God, where we intercede for the people around us, intercede for this nation. We're in a sad place when the Lord tells his ministers, stop praying for America. Amen. I'm telling you folks, the Holy Ghost is leaving out of this world, out of this world, but this, this earth at the rapture of the church. The scripture says, when he that letteth be taken out of the way, then that wicked shall be revealed. But right now, the Holy Ghost grieved, grieved. And I can feel it in my spirit when I say this to you. Like a dove, that's a morning dove. That cooing, that, they, that sound that they make. Holy Ghost. A turtle dove. No longer heard in the land. Holy Ghost leaving. The precious Holy Ghost is leaving the United States of America. I've heard of ministers that are leaving the United States. Listen, if God begins to move upon ministers to leave this country, you better follow them. You better get out of here. We're hearing warnings right now. I live in Florida, and we're hearing warnings that we need to get out of Florida. When God moves, people, you better move when God moves, because God's not playing games. And it's one thing to be moved with fear. It's a whole nother thing that when God forewarns you, and you have plenty of time to get out. I'm here to tell you that... Florida is Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm here to tell you that there are places like California, Las Vegas. These are Sodom and Gomorrah and they've been marked by God for judgment. You better be ready. You better know his voice. And if you don't know his voice, you better know someone that does. You better know a minister that knows God. The move is on, people. The move is on. It's time, Lot, to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's time to leave Sodom. It's time to leave Gomorrah. It's time to flee to that mountain. Praise God. Oh, yes, it is time to get out. God sent angels to get Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, we don't, like my pastor used to say, we don't have fluttering wings like the angels do. But the word angel means messenger or mini, uh, messenger. So, listen, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to them that are heirs of salvation? God is speaking. God is warning. He always uh, warns before he wounds. You hear what I'm saying to you? The Lord always warns before he wounds. And I believe we're in the hour right now that most people will not even have time to pack their things from what is coming. I'm telling you right now, there's a fire coming. The fires that we saw in California, nothing comparing to what's coming. The things that are coming upon this earth. God has given the people plenty of time. 
plenty of time to repent, plenty of time to turn. And the Lord said he's going to cut it short in righteousness. Because he said nobody would be saved. Nobody would have been saved, he said, if he didn't cut it short. What happens when you get good apples with rotten apples? The rotten apples turn the good apples rotten. And so God is saying, I've got to cut this off. I've got to get, I've got to ingather the good fruit. So it's not ruined by the bad fruit. The axe is laid. Amen. Serious hour, people. And the message hasn't changed. John came saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came saying the same message. And then they asked Peter, what should we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So the message hasn't changed. It's still repent. Turn to, to the Lord. Turn around and, and turn to the Lord and be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Most of what has been said on this broadcast today most was not even thought about in the sense that I prepared anything beforehand. I'm telling you, folks. Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. They overcame by the blood of the lamb salvation through the blood. And by the word of their testimony, that's the spirit of prophecy. Are you listening? That's what you're hearing right now in this broadcast. That's why we entitled this, this ministry, this broadcast, Spirit of Prophecy. How are you going to overcome the dragon if you don't have the word of God? It's only God's word that defeats the devil. Satan says all kinds of things, but God always has the last word. Amen? Obama says a lot of things, but God has the final word. I believe we're coming into the time where God's ministers, and I'll even go another step because of the hour, it's late, even the prophets of God will know things that are going to happen just before they happen. And we will give warning. And if you don't take heed to that warning, you're on your own. You're on your own if you do not take heed to the warning of the prophet. Are you listening? I'm not talking about a five-fold ministry. I'm talking about the prophet that comes and, and warns the people before judgment. I'm not talking about just giving a word to edify the body of Christ. I'm talking about warning. Just like in the days of old. Because you have false prophets and you have true prophets. And I believe the Lord has some real prophets, some true prophets, and they're telling the truth. They're not watering down the truth. They fear God. And I believe that, people, that we're coming into the time where the Lord is going to give us warning. The Lord will do nothing except he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets, first. Amen? No time to play in church. You better know God. You better know you're saved. Hallelujah. Remember, Satan hates and opposes the truth. He's the author of a lie. Thank you.